Hi guys, so it's Liz Meitner and I'm back with a new video. And as per my so many requests that I've gotten in my inbox, um, I'm going to be doing a Draw My Life video today. And so yeah, I'm just going to be talking about my life for a solid 13 minutes and explaining everything that happened in so far since I was born. So yeah, it's going to be great. So I was born on November 7th of 1878 in Vienna, the capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austria, and I was the third of eight children of a relatively weak, uh, wealthy, and cultured Jewish family, although I became a Lutheran at 29. Anyways, my dad was Philip Meitner, a lawyer and chess master, and my mom was Hedwig Skovran, a talented and amateur musician. I guess as a child I was always academically inclined and I actually found a passion in mathematics. I always found myself nose deep in a book and I really loved to discover more about it. So my dad actually hired several private tutors to help me learn more as well. And it was really a great experience for me because I was able to delve into what I loved. And mathematics really became a passion for me. Um, I actually grew up in a very extraordinarily stimulating intellectual atmosphere uh, where my brothers and I grew up. Um, we were always encouraged to think for ourselves and to always have heated discussions and talk about different uh, topics and events and it would be really amazing. Um, my parents, uh, my mom would actually always used to say, listen to your father and me but think for yourself and this was something that stuck with me throughout my entire life. Like all Austrian girls in the 1800s, formal schooling actually ended at the age of 14. So my brothers were allowed to attend a grammar school in preparation for college education, but I wasn't. I stayed at home, read books, and played piano. Um, and it was really up to me to study on my own while my brothers had the opportunity to go to school and actually prepare for a college education while I had to do all the work on my own. So yeah, it was kind of rough, but I got through it. I actually decided to get a teaching degree, as my father suggested, when I was 21 years old. I really want to attend uh, the University of Vienna and get his highest degree, but my dad recommended that I actually um, get a teaching qualification first to support myself. So I did that, and after I did that, uh, my dad actually helped pay for private tutoring to prepare me for the university entrance exam. And I passed in 1901. And that's where I attended the University of Vienna and actually got a science degree. And I obtained my doctorate degree five years after entering university and thus I was the second woman to gain a higher degree in Austria. And the fact that I got it from the University of Vienna was really special to me. And yeah, it was pretty awesome. I actually had the amazing opportunity of studying under Ludwig Boltzmann, an Austrian physicist and philosopher who had aided in the development of statistical mechanics. Um, it was really amazing to learn from him and I discovered that I actually really had a deep passion for physics as well and I continued to study physics after that too. So Mr. Boltzmann always had actually changed my life from then on. So I actually decided to go to Berlin a year later to study with Max Planck and Otto Hahn who are both renowned uh, sci uh, physicists in their field and it was really amazing to work with them. It was really enlightening. So yeah, it was a great experience. I actually worked with Han for 30 years and we led different areas in Berlin's Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for, uh, for Chemistry, um, but we studied together and researched radioactivity. We collaborated and discovered so many different things and radioactivity was one of the greatest things that we were studying together. We actually discovered a new radioisotope of the element actinium in 1908, and we discovered the element protactinium in 1918. In 1923, I also discovered the radiationless transition known as the Auger effect, named for Pierre Victor Auger, who discovered two years, two years later. We also discovered the radioactive recoil. When an atomic nucleus emits an alpha particle, the nucleus will recoil like a gun that has fired a bullet. Thus, the recoiling positively charged nucleus can be attracted to a negatively charged electrode. This recoil can be used to produce elements with very high purity by, like, by collecting them on a negative electrode. One of our biggest discoveries was actually being performed in Hans' laboratory in Berlin. And what we were trying to do was actually try and create a heavier element than uranium. But we were actually providing evidence for nuclear fission. 
What we tried to do was bombard uranium with slow moving neutrons, and the results seemed to indicate that the element barium was constantly one of the products. But how was this possible? Even though a neutron was being added to uranium, it should have become heavier. But it wasn't. Instead, we got barium. Uranium's atomic number was 92, but barium's was 56. We thought of it like if you add a big water droplet and a small water droplet, you would result in a bigger water droplet. This was logical, it made sense, right? But I got it. I found that the uranium nuclei were actually breaking into smaller nuclei by nuclear fission. I realized that the extra neutron wasn't sticking to the uranium, but smashing it into smaller pieces. The nucleus was so unstable that it had to split into two two smaller wire droplets, basically. Barium. When you shoot a neutron at uranium-235, you actually get a compound nucleus that's extremely unstable and has no choice but to uh, separate into two separate atoms. And that, those atoms will be barium-141 and krypton-92. And each of these shoot two and one neutron in, for a total of three neutrons. With these three neutrons, you can continue to shoot more uranium-235 atoms, and thus there is a huge chain reaction by each of the neutrons. And just from one neutron, you can set up this chain reaction. I quickly realized that this nuclear fission could actually result in a lot of energy, insurmountable amounts of energy that could actually be potentially dangerous. Little did I know that I soon became a part of a race to try and create an element that was heavier than uranium. This sparked the first stages that would lead to the discovery and use of nuclear power. And the discovery of nuclear fission led other scientists to prompt Albert Einstein to write a warning letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt in the United States. Einstein feared that Germany would make an atomic bomb before the Allies, and this led to the development of the Manhattan Project, codenamed for the American-led effort to develop a functional weapon, the first atomic bomb during World War II. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry to Otto Hahn for the discovery of nuclear fission and completely overlooked me probably because he actually downplayed my role since I left Germany. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his, quotation mark, post most spectacular discovery, where he and Strassman had apparently discovered the fission of uranium and thorium and medium-heavy atomic nuclei without the help of me, according to the Nobel Prize. It was a pretty crushing time for me because all my work and time and effort with Otto Hahn actually just went to waste even after I spent 30 years with him working and he still ended up betraying me and I didn't get any credit for what I'd done. The Nobel Committee still hasn't really acknowledged this and some people believe it was one of the biggest oversights that they had actually ever made in their history and I kind of agree. <laughs> As I mentioned before, the Manhattan Project was codenamed for the American-led effort to develop the first atomic bomb during World War II. When I visited the United States in 1946, I was treated like a celebrity by the press as someone who had left Germany with the bomb in my purse. And I hated it so much. It was just all the time and it was the worst criticism I could ever get. I always regretted my contribution to the creation of the atomic bomb or the destroyer of worlds. I hated the title mother of the atomic bomb, and that I actually contributed to this. I refused to work on the Manhattan Project in the end. And I was devastated by the news from Hiroshima. Even though I didn't get the Nobel Prize, I did get an even greater honor. I was named after an element. No, an element was named after me, sorry. And they named it Mytnerium, and it's the heaviest known element in the universe, and that's quite the honor. Um, so I have this amazing title. I am apparently the most significant woman uh, scientist of the 20th century, and that is something that I am truly proud of. And Otto Hahn 
can go take his Nobel Prize and be proud because I am still the better scientist. So yeah, thank you so much guys for listening. It's been awesome and this was really fun. Uh, I'll see you in my next video. It's been great. Thank you.